Hi everyone, this week we're starting our chemistry unit. We're going to kick it off by talking about matter. In this class we're going to be talking about four different states of matter. Solids, liquids, gases, and one you might not have heard of called plasmas. All of these states of matter have three important properties, which are volume, shape, and mass. Before we go any further, it's important for everyone to know that matter is made up of atoms. Atoms are tiny particles that we're going to talk more about later on, but they are the smallest piece of matter, and they are used to make up things like elements and compounds. In different states of matter, the atoms act differently. First, we're going to talk about solids. Solids hold their shape and don't flow, so they won't take the shape of their container. They're also very dense. In solids, the atoms are packed together tightly. The molecules and the atoms are actually still vibrating, even though it doesn't appear that a solid is moving. The, um, at a very small atomic level, everything is moving. Um, examples of solids are rocks, fur, ice, and powders. Next, we're going to talk about liquids. Liquids take the shape of the container that they're in. They have molecules that are able to actually move. So the molecules are not just vibrating, they're actually moving past each other. Sometimes the molecules will attract each other and be attached. That's like the hydrogen bonds you learned about with water. Um, and that's because a lot of molecules have a slight positive or negative charge. Um, another word that's related to liquids is viscous. Um, liquids that are very thick are considered to be viscous. So like honey would be very viscous while water would not be viscous. Other examples are blood and syrup. Liquids are less dense than solids but more dense than gases. Next we're going to talk about gases. Gases can fill a container of any size or shape. So liquids can fill a lot of containers, but not if the container is too small. Gases can be compressed to a really, really small size, um, so they can fill any container. They're the least dense state of matter. The molecules are always moving, and they'll still interact with each other sometimes, but not as much. Um, they also fill the entire container at the same time, not only the bottom. So liquids will fill just the bottom of the container, but gases can fill the whole thing. Examples of gases are water vapor, carbon dioxide, helium, and nitrogen. Now let's talk about a state of matter you might not have heard of, called a plasma. Plasmas rarely occur naturally because they're pretty tricky to make. What happens is that energy is added to a gas which causes the atoms to come apart so that they're ions, which are charged atoms. So some of them are positive and some of them are negative. Um, there's little or no order in a plasma, and, and examples are neon signs, stars, the northern lights is actually a plasma, and fluorescent lights. Now let's talk about how matter changes into different forms. When matter changes forms, it's called a phase change, and phase changes are caused by energy. Usually this energy is in the form of heat. So what happens is that when there's heat added, the phase change goes in this direction, and when heat is taken away, then things go back towards solids. These are some really important chemistry words um, that discuss phase changes. A lot of them you probably have heard of before, like melting, another word for that is fusion, freezing, liquid to solid, boiling, liquid to gas, that's also called vaporization, that's the chemistry term. Condensation we just talked about, that's when a gas is changing into a liquid, that's what's happening in the water cycle. Sublimation is solid to a gas, you might be wondering when that happens. A good example of that is dry ice. So dry ice is frozen carbon dioxide and it converts pretty immediately into uh, the gas form of carbon dioxide. And then deposition, which is gas to solid. An example of deposition could be frost at night where water vapor is turned directly into ice. 
just because we just finished our hydrosphere unit, I wanted to make the connection between phase changes and the water cycle, which is a really important part of the hydrosphere. Um, so without phase changes, without energy causing these conversions, we actually wouldn't have a water cycle, which means that we would have a lot of water-related problems on Earth. So evaporation to condensation to precipitation, those are all um, phase changes that are really important to how we live our lives. All right, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and check back next time for some more chemistry.